Hello and a very warm welcome to Great Clacton Parish and our Sunday morning service. In fact, our special service today, a special commemorative service um, on the weekend of the coronation of King Charles III. Welcome once more to St John's Church, where today, as I film on Saturday, we have just had our screening of the coronation service itself. And uh, a good number of people were able to join together to uh, watch that and to join in with the prayers for the King and so on. And this service today, our weekly service, focuses on what's been going on this weekend, helps us to pray for the King, helps us to pray for Queen Camilla, helps us to pray for the royal family, and helps us to pause as a nation as we reflect on this uh, special time in the nation's life that too may cause us to pause and think about where we are as a nation and where we would want to be. And throughout all of that, we ask for God's help and God's strength. I'm going to use quite a lot of the uh, special commemorative service that has been uh, produced by uh, the Church of England. We've chosen parts of it to use in our morning services uh, at St John's and uh, a slightly different style at St Mark's uh, today. And we will be using much of it here online as well. You're very well, warmly welcomed as our online co congregation, whether you are uh, joining in as this premieres on um, Sunday the, the 7th of May, or whether you are joining in later. Do take the opportunity to greet one another on this special weekend, if you can. And I'm going to use the special words of introduction from this commemorative service as we begin our time together today. Maybe you would join in when words come up on the screen. And these uh, words will be used across the country in many churches today. A verse from Romans chapter 12 starts us off reminding us uh, as Christians what we would want to see in our churches and across our country. And maybe something that the, the king himself wants to promote among us. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honour. Dear friends, we have come together in the name of Christ to offer praise and thanksgiving, to seek forgiveness of our sins, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world. We also gather this day to pray for our King, that both now and always God might grant him wisdom and grace for his ministry among us. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we, with Charles our King, give ourselves to the service of God and others, that our communities may flourish and be places of trust and friendship. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. And we pray. Blessed are you, Lord Jesus. For as you were sent by the Father, so you send us. Equip Charles our King and all your people with the gifts to fulfil our calling, that we may love as you loved, serve as you served, and willingly follow wherever you lead. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Well, our songs and hymns today remind us 
that even though we celebrate the coronation of our nation's king, of our, an earthly king, we serve a heavenly king. We serve King Jesus, the one whom we gather round uh, this morning. It was great to remember that while the coronation service was a great spectacle, uh, something that was televised across the world, something that millions watched with those uh, uh, grace and glorious clothes that were worn and the, the grace and uh, glorious fanfares that, that were trumpeted and so on. It was um, at its core a service of praise and worship to God. A service of praise and worship that uplifted the Lord Jesus. And so we sing to him as the one that God has enthroned as our king. We sing with that great uh, modern hymn as we start, Come People of the Risen King. We pray for King Charles. We uh, acknowledge him as our earthly king. But ultimately we serve the Lord Jesus enthroned as our heavenly king. Wherever we are, uh, however we feel today, whatever we're doing, come people of the risen king who delight to give him praise.
although we encourage one another to gather around our risen King, to worship him with our words, to worship him with our lives, we know that we often fail in that. The Lord Jesus is the one, our Lord God, our heavenly King, has enthroned as the one to gather around and worship. But our lives often fail him. In fact, fact, Jesus himself spoke often of God's kingdom. And the picture of God's coming kingdom for the Lord Jesus was a good reason to repent and turn to him for forgiveness. Jesus himself said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We do that just now as we come before our heavenly king and pray to him in repentance using the words on the screen. O king enthroned on high, filling the earth with your glory, holy is your name, Lord God Almighty. In our sinfulness, we cry to you to take our guilt away and to cleanse our lips to speak your word through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus taught that uh, repentance uh, and faith in him will bring forgiveness. And so we pray, Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins, open our eyes to God's truth, strengthen us to do God's will, and give us the joy of his kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. One of the first things that happened in the coronation service yesterday. As uh, the king and um, his consort came to the the front of Westminster Abbey. He was approached by a young chorister who said these words to him. Your Majesty, as children of the kingdom of God, we welcome you in the name of the King of Kings. And Charles replied, in his name and after his example, I come not to be served, but to serve. Taking words of the Lord Jesus, famous words of the Lord Jesus, that the Son of Man, Jesus himself, came not to be served, but to serve. A commitment to frame his reign by the Lord Jesus' example, an example of service. And so our affirmation of faith today is based on those great words from the book of Philippians that remind us that Jesus himself was willing to humble himself and take the, the um, form and nature of, of a servant, serving others, in his life, even going as far as death. So together, let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to a quality with God, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a slave. He was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And as we remember 
all that Jesus has done. And as we ourselves want to form our lives around his example, let's sing together. Crown him with many crowns, the lamb upon the throne. He's the one we want to worship with our whole lives. Well, we pause now in the midst of our special service, just for one or two notices. And we do have a, a new notice sheet out this week. If you're one of our regulars, do get hold of that if you can. Uh, it even mentions the coronation on the, the, the front page, uh, strangely enough. Um, and it takes us through what's happening over the next couple of weeks as a church. And if you're watching this as it premieres on the, the Sunday or on, even on the Monday morning, uh, do make sure you, uh, if you can, come along to the last part of our special uh, Coronation Weekend uh, events um, on Monday afternoon. Uh, we've had these posters up for a little while, uh, mentioning all the events, but on the Monday afternoon, you might know that there's um, a special afternoon tea being served at St Mark's. And 
Um, we hope as many people will come along, bring friends and family and so on. It'll be an afternoon tea uh, fit for a royal weekend. We've, we've got the sandwiches prepared, the, the scones, the, the, the jam, the cream and the cakes all ready. Uh, do come and join us uh, if you can for an afternoon um, special celebratory uh, tea. St Mark's any time between uh, 2 and 5pm uh, on Monday the 8th of May, Bank Holiday Monday. Um, and that means there's no, uh, none of our normal events on, on Monday. It is a special uh, bank holiday. Um, but uh, we have, through the week, uh, some special, ordinary special events uh, coming up. We've got our Wednesday worshippers on Wednesday. T will be leading that this week, Wednesday the 10th of, of May. Um, we've got together again in the church hall here at St John's uh, at 10.30 on Thursday. Stop in for a, a tea, coffee and uh, some chat uh, there. Um, and uh, we've also got this week our Friday's Cafe on Friday morning um, 12th of uh, May. Uh, it's from 9 till 1. Pop in any stage for an all-day breakfast and uh, good time to meet others uh, from, from the community. Uh, and then next Sunday, back to more normal services, but at our usual times, 9 o'clock at St John's, 10.30 at St Mark's, 11 o'clock here online on our gathering service, 5 p.m. in St Mark's, that informal service that starts with some food. And Coronation Weekend, uh, but a bumper crop of birthdays to go with that. We celebrate the King's Coronation. We also celebrate uh, birthdays within our own church family. We have a birthday for Claire, for Jean, for Brenda, for Mary and for, for Len and for Jean, uh, another Jean this weekend. So that's Claire, Jean, Brenda, Mary, Len and Jean as well. And so to them we sing. Da 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 da. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday dear Claire, Jean, Brenda, Mary, Len and Jean. Happy birthday to you. For them and anybody else with a birthday this week uh, that I didn't know about, a very happy birthday to you all. Well, we do return to the theme of our service just now, our uh, special service for this coronation weekend. And there was much music, wasn't there, in Westminster Abbey uh, yesterday, and music based often on the Book of Common Prayer or on the Bible. Uh, some words that have been used uh, many times before at coronations, some words that were, uh, and music that was specially written for uh, King Charles's coronation. And around the first reading, that the Prime Minister read, the first reading from the Bible. Some words uh, were sung either side of it based on Psalm 47, which is a great psalm to have at a coronation because it reminds us of earthly kings, but it reminds us that they all serve a heavenly king and are called, along with all peoples, to bring him praise. So maybe you join in with me as we say the words of Psalm 47 together. Clap your hands, all the nations. Shout to God with cries of joy. How awesome is the Lord Most High, the great King over all the earth. He subdued nations under us, peoples under our feet. He chose our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loved. God has ascended amid shouts of joy. The Lord amid the sounding of the trumpets. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing to him a psalm of praise. God reigns over the nations. God is seated on his holy throne. The nobles of the nations assemble 
as the people of the God of Abraham. For the kings of the earth belong to God. He is greatly exalted. A psalm that expresses God's special love and care for his uh, chosen people. But also his uh, rule over the whole world. And how he brings people from everywhere to serve and love him and be part of his people. And we remember that great God, amazingly, can be our own personal God as well. One who we know through the Lord Jesus and one who by his spirit lives in us, can live in us. And so we're going to sing, King of Kings, Majesty, God of Heaven, living in me. Let's join with Rachel as she leads us in this lovely song. We come to some special prayers today. And first of all, we pray for King Charles. And we use a prayer, a collect, specially written by the Church Society for this weekend. It's a prayer that we've put in the front of our newsletter for this fortnight. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who has raised up your servant Charles to be our king. We humbly pray that you would endue his royal heart with holiness and your heavenly grace, that he may ever walk before you in righteousness to maintain and defend the true profession of the gospel. 
grant him honour, health and happiness in this world. And may he always put his trust in you so that he will be crowned with immortality in the world to come. For the safety, peace and benefit of his whole kingdom and commonwealth and the glory of your sacred word of truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. With so many people watching the coronation and thinking about maybe what was said there, we pray that it would be a witness to all who hear. This prayer from our prayer diary. O Lord our God, on this special weekend, when the eyes of the world are focused on the coronation service, May all that is said and done be to your honour, your glory and your praise. May the world be reminded of the Christian foundations of our nation. And may you strengthen King Charles to uphold and build on these, as he himself puts his trust in you. Amen. We want the king to be uh, a true follower of the Lord Jesus. But we want our own lives to reflect uh, those values that are promoted in the, the coronation service as well. And so I use the prayer for today, the fourth Sunday of Easter. Almighty God, whose son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life. Raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness. That we may seek those things which are above. Where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we pray the words of the Lord's Prayer. Remembering those in need physically, those in need spiritually. We pray for ourselves and our friends and family, for our daily bread, but also for our forgiveness and our delivery from evil. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Well, we turn now, as we try to do in each of our services, uh, to the Bible, uh, to God's Word. As part of the coronation service, the king was presented with a Bible, with these words. Sir, to keep you ever mindful of the law and the gospel of God, as the rule for the whole life and government of Christian princes, receive this book the most valuable thing that this world affords. Here is wisdom. This is the royal law. These are the lively oracles of God. So we pray, Father God, as we turn to your word now, we pray that just as the king was encouraged to, to base his rule on your law, we too may brace our lives on what we learn from you. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, not just near the beginning of the service, uh, the coronation service, was the king pointed to the, the statement where Jesus says he came not to be served, but to serve. 
but also after the oaths that the king took, uh, the oaths to, for example, uh, rule uh, justly, uh, the, the, the oaths to serve his people, and the oaths to proclaim uh, the, the gospel of Jesus. As well um, as at the beginning of service, after those oaths, the king um, himself prayed a prayer that started with these words. God of compassion and mercy, whose son was sent not to be served, but to serve. Give grace that I may find in thy service perfect freedom and in that freedom, knowledge of thy truth. What a great prayer to pray. The thoughts based around the fact that he was called, just like Jesus, to serve and not be served. The fact that kings uh, feel that um, that they should serve and not be served isn't, isn't of course, that obvious. There's been many kings in history um, who have thought differently from that. And I guess even our own kings and queens in their, their less good moments uh, are, like the rest of us, uh, selfish and want to be served and not to serve. It's not obvious that a king should want to serve and not be served. And of course that thought is based on Jesus, the King of Kings, who very clearly came not to be served, but to serve. His whole life showed that. And especially that, that phrase he himself used from Mark chapter 10. Uh, let me read to you uh, what Jesus said and why he said it. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you? He asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, you will drink the cup I drink and be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with. But to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. Even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And just like through the ages, uh, many kings may have had the wrong idea of kingship. Well, so did some of Jesus' disciples. In fact, probably all of Jesus' disciples. James and John certainly had the wrong idea of kingship, the wrong idea of what it meant to be great they wanted Jesus to use his kingly power to exalt them, to give them, them the most important places in his kingdom. They didn't really understand what his kingdom would look like or what it meant for him. But on this walk that they were on, and they were on the road to Jerusalem, the road to where Jesus would suffer and die uh, to bring forgiveness for many people, on that road, James and John kind of walk along beside them and ask them, him this question. We want you to do whatever we ask. Uh, will you do that for us? 
And of course, Jesus uh, isn't fooled into doing something that he shouldn't do. And instead, uh, tells them to realize what they're asking. Because if they follow him, uh, that's not the sort of people they should be. But the rest of the disciples are just as bad. They become uh, indignant with James and John. And maybe they're thinking themselves, well, actually, we should have those places of glory. Uh, none of them, none of the disciples come out of this terribly well. And Jesus calls them together. Uh, a bit like uh, a, a teacher might call uh, fighting children in the playground together. And he says these famous words to them. You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. And their high officials exercise authority over them. Well, the sort of ancient kings, the sort of officials, uh, didn't think that they were there to serve others. No, people were there to serve them. And they lorded it over others. But Jesus just says, not so with you. Whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. There was a new way to be great in Jesus' kingdom. And that was to serve others. That's the true road to greatness, Jesus says. That's the road that his disciples should be on, he says. Because... That is the road that he was on, the road that led to Jerusalem. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. In fact, Jesus had been on that road all the time. He didn't come to be served by others, but his whole life shows that he had come to serve, to serve others. He spent time healing people. He spent time with those who were outcast from society because of diseases. He spent time with those who were outcasts from society because of their sin. And he used his time to teach about God and bring people and help people to repent and turn back to God. And throughout the Gospels we see that. For the Son of Man did not come to be served but to serve. But of course he went one step further in his service. And to give his life as a ransom for many. The biggest act of service uh, that he could do. His death was an act of service, but it was part of his whole life of service. He came not to be served, but to serve. And as the king of kings, he sets a model for what true, true kingship is like. And therefore, Christian kings across the years, even if they haven't managed to live up to it, have been called to be those who follow Jesus' example and to serve their people. And King Charles was called to do the same again yesterday. And he prayed that he would do just that. And we pray that God would give him the strength to do that. But not just him. That God would give us the strength to to, uh, serve as Jesus would have us serve. First of all, to trust in the Lord Jesus for that forgiveness that only he can bring. He came to give his life as a ransom for many. To set many people free. Let's turn to him and ask for that. But having done that, let's follow his example as the one who came not to be served, but to serve. And as his disciples, to follow his words, whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. Whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant. For we follow a king who did not come to be served, but to serve, and who gave his life as a ransom for many. got another song about uh, kingship true kingship one we often sing at advent time but one that's very appropriate for today for as people look forward to their messiah their coming king they would have said hail to the lord's anointed great david's greater son 
King David, a great Old Testament king, the greatest Old Testament king. But the Lord Jesus, an even greater king who came as Messiah. Let's sing together as Pam leads us. And just afterwards, we're going to see a special video made for today. On the 6th of May 2023, King Charles III will be crowned as King. He is the 40th monarch to be crowned at Westminster Abbey. The first one was William the Conqueror, who was crowned all the way back in 1066. Lots of the traditions in a coronation have stayed the same for hundreds of years. During the ceremony, the King makes promises to serve he is anointed with oil. He is given precious objects. And then he is crowned. And we might expect that a king with so much fame and power would demand that we serve him. But King Charles has promised to use his life serving us. When his mother, Queen Elizabeth II, died, he honoured her life of serving others. And then he said, Wherever you may live, and whatever may be your background or beliefs, I shall endeavour to serve you with loyalty 
respect and love. But King Charles isn't the only king who has chosen to serve. The Bible tells us that there is a king of the whole universe who has come into the world to serve us, King Jesus. Jesus said he did not come to be served, but to serve. And he showed it again and again as he healed the sick, as he ate with outcasts, and ultimately as he died on the cross to pay the price for all that we've got wrong. King Jesus is our true and forever servant king. And the coronation is full of things that remind King Charles and us that this is true. The king is given the sovereign's orb, a golden globe topped with a cross. It was made in 1661. As we look at this, we can remember that Jesus is the true king over all the world. He also receives two scepters, golden rods with a cross and dove on top. These are based on shepherd's crooks. As we see them, we can remember King Jesus, the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. Finally, the king is crowned with St. Edward's crown. It is topped with a cross, decorated with 444 jewels and weighs almost two and a half kilograms. When we look at this incredible crown, we can remember King Jesus. His crown was not made of jewels, but made of thorns, as he came to serve us by dying in our place. As we celebrate the coronation of King Charles III, let us also celebrate that Jesus is our true and forever servant king. And let us pray for King Charles, that God would help him as he seeks to serve us. That was our special extra bit uh, for today. And thank you to Go Chatter Videos for that uh, special video that reminded us of some of the special bits of the coronation service and what they mean. As we come towards the end of our time together today, do thank you for watching this special service. And we're going to use some responsive prayers as we finish. First of all, praying for the king and for the, the sort of rule that we would want to see in his uh, realms and territories and in our own country. And then a final prayer where we take the example that the king has been set by the Lord Jesus and ask that we too um, would serve our, our country, our communities uh, for God's glory, committing ourselves to that. That will lead us to our final hymn today. Hear the call of the kingdom. First of all, our responsive prayers. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, would you please reply, hear our prayer. Let us pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, for Charles, our King, that you may pour upon him abundant gifts to help him fulfill the promises made at his coronation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That he will have grace, wisdom and strength to live a life of service to you and to his people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Camilla, the Queen, and all the royal family, that they may love and support the King in the burden of his office. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the building up of the church under its supreme governor, for the building up of all Christian people, and for mutual understanding across our land, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this United Kingdom, for His Majesty's other realms and territories, for the whole Commonwealth of Nations, for governments and ministers across the world, and for all who are called to public service, that they will seek justice, 
mercy and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask these things through Jesus Christ, our King. To him be glory and power forever. Amen. And on our screens, let's pray this prayer together, committing ourselves to serve God and our neighbours. Gracious God, in company with our King, we rededicate ourselves to your service. Take our minds and think through them. Take our lips and speak through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire with love for you. That here we may have your peace. And in the world to come, may see you face to face. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we sing together, hear the call of the kingdom. Now may the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else. May he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when the Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. Amen.